this bread and the peace of the Lord is going on. Amen. Is the peace of the Lord going on in your life? Yes. Amen. Has God been good to you? Yes. Amen. So let us worship him and give him the glory and the honor yes. that he so rightfully yes. deserves. Yes. Amen. He deserves all of our praise, yes. all of our, everything that we have. Yes. We owe it to God. Amen. 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 So we thank God for allowing us to come together again today. Uh, to worship and praise Him. At least that's what I hope you came for. Yeah. Yeah. That you want to worship God for all that He has done yeah. just through the past week that we uh, lived through. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All week long, I haven't been feeling well either. But I thank God I feel all right right now. Amen. I praise Him for what He has done in my life. Yes. Amen. And that's what we all should do is praise God for what He has done in our life. So would you praise him with me just for a moment and shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. This time we're going to have our scripture and our prayer. We're going to have our scripture and our prayer. Amen. Deacon uh, White and Deacon Landry shall give us our scripture. Amen. We're going to ask Deacon White to give us. This morning, Deacon Wade, I'm sorry, to give us. Uh, I'll pray how our uh, scriptures come from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 31. Start with uh, verse 5. And the Lord shall give them unto before your face, and ye may do unto that according to all the commandments which I have commanded, commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Mm -hmm. And fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, it is he that doeth with them. He will not fail them, nor yes. forsake them. Yes. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. For thou must do, must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto thy father to give them. And they shall cause them to inherit it. May Lord have blessing reading and understanding of the word this morning. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Now the second right. scripture that follows in that line of courage, of be of good courage, comes from Psalms number 31, verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord add a blessing to the reading and the <coughs> and understanding of the soul. Yes. 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 Let's go boldly but humbly before his righteous and mighty throne. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our many hundreds blessings, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for getting up today, dear Lord, having activities on our limbs, dear Lord, to be able to worship in the house of the Lord. So, dear Lord, we say thank you, dear Lord, for guiding us, for dangers seen and unseen throughout the week, dear Lord, sustaining us, dear Lord, putting food on our tables, dear Lord, and a roof over our head, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for the day of Thanksgiving, dear Lord, which we know is every day, dear Lord, because we're thankful for what you've done for us and what we could not do for ourselves. You said you're one and only begotten Son to die for us, dear Lord. So, dear Lord, we ask, dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord, that you bless those that are not feeling well, dear Lord. Dear Lord, those that are, dear Lord, having medical appointments, dear Lord, those that were not able to make it, dear Lord, such as Sister Dark, dear Lord, and all the other ones, dear Lord. Dear Lord, just... Touch them and bless them, dear Lord, right where they stand or right, right where they lay, dear Lord. Help them, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for the church called Bethany, dear Lord. Dear Lord, that have saved souls, dear Lord, that have put everyone, dear Lord, uh, on the right path, dear Lord. Dear Lord, so we thank you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, this church, dear Lord, people have been saved, dear Lord. Jobs, dear Lord, have, have been given, dear Lord. People have been healed, dear Lord. So we say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless Pastor Benson, dear Lord. Yeah. Sister yes. Benson, dear Lord, bless her household, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless all the ministers on the roster, dear Lord. And help us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, help us, dear Lord, continue, dear Lord, to want to know more about your word and learn more about your word, dear Lord. Bless and watch over our children, dear Lord, as they're out, dear Lord, in school, uh, out of school, dear Lord, and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for what you've done, dear Lord. We thank you for what you have done, dear Lord, in our lives, what you will do, dear Lord, and what you're doing right now. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the scripture and the prayer. At this time, I want to give those that would like to share an opportunity and will give you an opportunity uh, to tell us what God has done for you. If there's something that you want to share with us, Lord, we'll give me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. When 
I was growing up, they said they all move at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I, and you know I know that God has done something yeah. for you this week. Amen. 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 So don't, don't, don't sit down. Amen. 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 Tell me what God has done for you. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
many know. That's the yeah. 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 word. Yeah. Hallelujah. And now we time we're going to have our scripture and our prayer. Brother Ferguson shall lead us in our scripture. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. It's good. It's perfect. The way God has so set us in the body, in Christ. Not only are we members, in particular one of another, we encourage each other because of our oneness. It's time for our, de our devotional reading. If you will locate your red hymnal and please stand. <laughs> It will be taken from 592, just to remind us of our unity in the faith, and that we are indeed encouragers one of another. Number 592, titled Christian Unity. For our internet audience, we will be considering Psalms 133, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12, and 20, and then 25 through 27. When the congregation has it, please say amen. Amen. Let's begin. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Congregation. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. For as one is one, and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink unto one spirit. Congregation. For the body is not one member, but a many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the body, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. That there should be no, is it schism? It's schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one of another. And we're speaking of unity and encouragement. Congregation, and whether? And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it all together. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Amen. Would the congregation remain standing for prayer for the ladies? Shall we pray? Amen. Again, all wise eternal heavenly Father, we approach thy throne of mercy and grace. Thanksgiving. We're so grateful that you have allowed us to come to this place. It was not nothing or anything that you owed us, but because of your mercy and your grace, you allowed us to come to this place. So, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In spite of all that you've done for us, yes. we'll never be able to thank you enough. Oh, yes. But, God, we just want to take a few moments, a little time out to tell you how much we appreciate all that you've done for us. When we think about it, 
we asked ourselves, where would we be if it were not for you? We're no better than anyone else. But God, you saw fit that you kept us last night as we slumbered and slept. You touched us with the finger of love. There was no earthquake. There was no running out of car into a house, but you just touched us with your finger of love. You woke us up and you started us on another day. You gave us an active use of our limbs and our body. So Lord, we just said thank you. We don't know any other words than just to say, but just thank you. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done for us. Fathers, we stand this morning, we humbly submit ourselves unto you. That the Holy Spirit may come and energize us into worship and praise. That your name may be truly glorified and honored. Because it's you and you alone that deserve it. So, Lord, we say thank you so much. We thank you so much. We pray, Master, for those who among us are sick. Oh, God, we know that you are here. I testify myself that you are here. You delivered me from camp so many years ago. And I said, thank you, not only that, but there have been other illness in my body that you delivered me from. And I said, thank you. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do it. So I said, thank you. I thank you. Fathers, we stand, and if we go through this worship experience, we pray that our worship and our praise will be pleasant in your sight. We pray, Master, for every person that's in the building. Yes, yes. We pray for Bethany as a whole. Thank you, Lord. Then, Master, we pray for those that don't know you in the pardon of their right. sin. Amen. Amen. Help the world to realize that we're living in the last days. Yes. Oh, God, we, we, we don't claim to know the date, but we know that we're closer than we've ever been before. Yes. So we thank you, Master, for just letting our lives roll on this little while. And we pray for the preach word today. Yes, Lord. That as a preacher, I mount the pulpit. Oh, God, we pray that you would anoint him afresh. Yes. Yes. That the Holy Spirit may take control and use him for your glory. Yes. Yes. And that we may be blessed by the word that you have yes. declared unto yes. us today. Yes. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Have your way today. Yes. Yes. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. 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 For Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 God bless you. you. May be seated at this time. We're going to prepare to give in a benevolent offering. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask the deacons and the ushers um, that they will come at this time in order that we may receive our offering. Amen. A couple of our brethren are not feeling well, so I'm going to stand in one of their places. Amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father, once again, we want to thank you for allowing us to go back to small portion. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the ones that were able to give, but a special blessing to the one that would like to but could not. Oh, yes. May we use this money for the upkeep of your kingdom on earth. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask the choir to give it to us. Amen. At this time, I turn it over to Pastor Wilson.
Trust and the Reverend Dr. Ronald yes. Bennett, yes. Reverend yes. Megan, yes. Reverend yes. Burlington, Reverend yes. White in her absence, and Elder Langston. Yes. And to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. Yes. The announcements for Bethany, First Baptist Church for Sunday, November the 29th, are as follows. On Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., our Bible study and prayer meeting. Pastoral counseling is daily by appointment. Sunday school begins at 8.30 a.m. Our morning worship begins at 10 a.m. Church activities. Last Sunday was truly a blessing when our young adults, their family, friends, packed the pews at Blue Jean Sunday was celebrated. And we want to thank everyone who participated. We were truly blessed. Thank all the participants, guests, and the congregation for showing their support. And we give God all the glory. Yeah. Amen. Next Saturday, December the 5th, at 10 a.m., the Women's Auxiliary presents a prayer brunch. The theme is Jesus Heals, the Power of the Lead. Yes. Take it from Mark 5:25, chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. Our guest minister is Cheryl Smith. The Harvest Christian Church at Roseville, Texas. Men and women are all invited to attend to this woman's prayer bunch given again by the woman's facility. Amen. Amen. These are your announcements. Please cover yourself accordingly. Goes up and out of the clerk, the Reverend Dr. Ronald Benson, our pastor. Amen. Is that right? 
Y'all just got through watching them. Come on, like, like you get it. Amen. Amen. So the church has to prepare uh, and get young people ready so they can assume leadership and responsibility. That is something that um, I'm big on. Amen. And we thank God for that. We're going to be ready now to hear the choir one more time. We're going to pray for all who are sick. And uh, if my memory serves me correct, where is Cindy? Cindy is here. She's not all right. We know that she'll be uh, going to the doctor on the 30th. Is that right? That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. We're going to be praying over here in these pews for all the sick. Amen. And we're going to believe God for healing. And we're going to believe God because that whole theme about uh, coming up this Saturday for the women is the power of believing. Yeah. All right. It's all in belief, according to how you believe. You. Medical documentation and medical studies have shown those who have faith come through these situations better than those who do not have faith. All right. Amen? Those who latch on on God, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They come through better than those who have no God. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's already been, died, been proven by medical studies. So what we want to do is do what we know. Uh, we don't need medical studies to tell us. God is a healer. Is that right? Amen. So we'll be praying if you have sickness in your family, in your body, then we want to be praying for you right now. Amen? As soon as the choir finishes next selection, we're going to be praying for healing. And who doesn't need healing? Looked up last night on the news and saw Marydell Maloney pass. And uh, while I didn't go to school with her, she came to the St. Mary's after I did. Uh, I just didn't know she was that young or that close to sickness and passed away on on the uh, Thanksgiving day. So you just never know. You better know Jesus. Amen. Death is an appointment. For the Word of God says it's appointed under man once to die, and after that, judgment. So, uh, you gotta know Jesus. I don't care how many cases you close, and I don't care how many times you voted the best lawyer in Texas, which they pay for that ad, by the way. Uh, whatever you're doing, pales in the way you're going. Amen? What we do here is just temporary. What you do in eternity is forever. Amen? Maybe we'll cover a little of these British novel, Dr. Faustus. Dr. Faustus was a German philosopher who traded his soul for 24 years of fame and fortune. And his 24 years flew by like that. And then the devil came for his soul. You to, how do you compare 24 years to, for eternity? I wouldn't trade nothing for eternity. I'd rather be poor, broke, and hungry for 24 years. Like that, uh, that brother Lazarus was. Is that right? And but Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, and the rich man was in Hades. So let us not focus so much on the, the young people get me. They say, I want to I wanna get rich or die trying. Is that what they say? You're going to die trying. And where are you going if you don't know Jesus? There is no place like heaven. I would not want to die and go to hell and have to spend eternity in eternal torment. I just thought I'd say those things because we're going to learn a little today. I'm not going to feed you the whole thing. You're already full. I can let you get that. If I feed you too much, you're going right back to sleep. I'm not going to wake you up. So I'm going to give you a snack. Amen. Amen. You yeah, everybody know what a snack is. It's not designed to fill you up, Sister Beth, but just to cover those hunger pains in the motions of where you're going. So you're going to have a sandwich today. Amen. I'm trying not to make it a meal because everybody don't need a long sermon. You need a sermon to the point. Amen. And you need to know what you need to be about, which is your father's business. And we have neglected that too long. Too long. We got the rodeo coming. I want our, our street to be decorated where our corner is. Amen. Amen. Not for the rodeo, but for Christ. Amen. 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 We got more cars coming down here on their way to the Wheat Island Sports Complex. And in a week, in a month, I guess maybe 100, uh, I don't know, 10,000, 14,000, 20, I don't know how many thousand. We know 300,000 come to the rodeo. Or 500,000. So I don't know how many come with their trailers and hitch up and down the street. But we're going to witness for Christ. We got the signs. You're going to make a sign. We'll let you make a sign. 
Amen. Um, advertising Jesus Christ. Jesus saves, Jesus forgives, Jesus heals, and a number of things about Jesus. And we're going to put our signs on the road. We're going to fish from our front porch. Amen. How, how you like that? Amen. 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 We're going to do that in Louisiana. <laughs> All right, you fish from your front porch in Louisiana because wherever you throw a line down, something's going to bite. All right. Let's have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many came for a good time? Give them all the hands up. Let me see. I, I was going to call and play. Let me get the job on. Let me go to the coach here.
precious blood. Yes. Blood that can just one drop. Cleanse all our sins, Lord. Past sins, present sins, future sins. The blood that Jesus shed. And even though it's not put in a vial, or it's not refrigerated, or it's not kept like our blood, it has power beyond the time in which it was shed. That blood continues through every generation, still having cleansing power, healing power, deliverance power. That's some blood. Just thinking about it can get you healed. The blood that Jesus shed. My, my blood would have to be refrigerated, and yours would too, and no doubt after a while it would get so old we couldn't use it, but his blood reaches to the highest mountain, goes down to the lowest valley. You don't even have to have a transfusion, just call on the name. Call on the name. There's power in the name. For those who are sick, for those who have been sick, for those who want to stand in for relatives, we're going to anoint you in the name of Jesus. By his power, by his authority. We're going to name, name the name of Jesus and ask for healing in your body. I believe Jesus can heal. I believe the woman with the issue of blood would tell you, I had an issue of blood 12 long years. Went to every doctor and gynecologist in the nation. Still couldn't get here. And I went out of the house that day. Being unclean, I slipped on out of the house. But I believed if I could just touch the hem of his garment, just the touch would make me whole. And she reached her hand through the crowd, and Jesus said, somebody touch me. And they said, how can you say when so crowd of people throng you? He said, my virtue has gone out. And somebody got healed. Lady had raised her hand. I'm the one. He said, that sins be forgiven. God is able to heal you. I believe he can heal Won't you come now? If you need healing, doesn't matter what the situation is. You need a blessing, you come on up anyway. You need something. We need thee every day and every hour. Amen? Amen. I believe you need the Lord if you want to come get it. The Lord made it free. Go to the hospital, the first thing they want to know is, what's your name and social security number and insurance card? And if you have if no insurance card, they might look at you cross that. But if you come to Jesus, you don't need any of that. Just say, I need me. Lord, I need me. Every hour, I need me. God said, that's enough. I'll heal you. So we believe that. We're going to let the deacons move and pass through those who have come to be anointed. I believe if you anoint with holy oil and pray the prayer of faith, and then the key is believing. What do you set in your heart when we're talking about that? Do you set in your heart, do you set down right now the, the principles of belief? I believe I'll be made whole. You gotta say that to yourself. I believe I'll be made whole. I believe I'll be made whole. You gotta begin to talk to yourself and get your mind attuned and adept to what God is trying to do with you right now. Some of you are confused about where you're going. But God says, I already know where you're going. I set you in this generation. And I placed you in a strategic place right now for usefulness in God's kingdom. Let him, let him put you, set you down on a great path. Let him increase your territory. And though, though it looks bleak right now, he specializes in doing the impossible. That's the more, the harder the task is, the more God is going to deliver you. People get mean, people get frustrated, people make you want to quit. But God says, stay there. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you right now. All who want to be anointed, raise your hand. And the deacons will make thee. Make their way to thee. And heal thee. Anoint you. Every hour. I need this, Lord. I need this. Oh, Jesus. Bless me. I need a blessing. Right now.
a matter of course, we challenged you last week. Somebody's already wondering what I challenged them about. We challenged you last week to learn the 39 books of the Old Testament. How many remember that day we challenged last week? I didn't ask you if you remember the books. I asked you if you remember that you were challenged. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all say, oh yeah, I remember now. And I said, the first person that stood up and can recite all 39 books of the Old Testament. Did I say that? We get a prize. Is that right? Now you're in trouble if you didn't remember what I said. And you don't remember your books of the Bible. You can't compete. Is that right? Now don't go looking at your shoes now, because there's nothing wrong with your shoes when you walk in here. Look at me and take your books. I watched Jamie Foxx on BET have his little daughter recite all books of the Bible, the 39 books of the Old Testament. I watched that and I was challenged by that. Amen? Amen. So how many? How many? Without looking, don't look. I didn't ask you to read it. Because I know, I know if you don't, you don't know them by now. And you probably won't know them. How many? How many did that? Stand up if you committed it to memory. All right. Not really participate. You already won once. She's not participating. I got how many? This, how many stood up? I got three, four. Come on, come on. All right. Crystal, come on first, and then Claire, and then Ayana. All right? Let me hear you. All right? You got to give them to me. In all. Yeah, you don't need them. You don't need them. We want to hear them all. All right? Okay. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Esther, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastic, Song of Solomon. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, who will be the next one? All right, class. I'm about to run this mic out to Claire. All right. All right. Come on, Ayana. You're next, baby. All right. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, uh, Obadiah, uh, uh, Jonah, Micah, um, Ezekiel, Daniel, 
Daniel, Blue's Angel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nehru, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Micah. <laughs> See, that's what that's what'll get you all excited. We'll get up on that. <laughs> See, isn't it amazing how money translates into opening up our awareness? Amen. Amen. Give them all a hand, because they fly. All right. Now you've got to take that mind of yours that is still working. Amen. Amen. Now most of y'all say I can't and you're already defeated. But you can't. You can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. Is that right? Yeah. And you can learn the books of the Bible. Now we're going to challenge those who have already recited to learn the New Testament too. Amen? Yeah. All, how many books of the Bible? 66. How many? 66. Somebody's just learning that this morning. 66 okay. books of the Bible. Amen? Amen. All right, just going to learn that because you need to know that. Just the, because you're a Christian. Amen? Amen. If they ask, ask you, where are the Ten Commandments found in the Bible for $2,500? Would you know what chapter and book to say? Look at everybody. Don't scratch your head now. How many know where to find the Ten Commandments? We've been going to church for 15, 20 years. If you come to Sunday school next Sunday, you'll get it. Exodus, Exodus, No, yeah, Exodus and Deuteronomy. And what chapter? What chapter, man? 20. 20 and, and Deuteronomy? Five, six. All right. Now here we are arguing about prayer. need to go back in school and we need to know that all those things. And we can't find them in our Bible. Is that a pitiful thing? Yes. Yes. Come on. We know more about what's coming on TV, on the demand channel. And we know how to set our phone to call multiple people on our cell phone. Is that right? Send out multiple texts, but we don't know what the real text is all about. That's why this generation is perishing because we have no vision in learning the Word of God. So we're going to challenge you. I like a challenge. I'm not going to beat you up. Amen? If the Lord didn't want me to talk, chastise people who, who have been sinners, He didn't want me to chastise you either. I just want you to be encouraged to pick up your Bible more than you pick up your remote control. All right? On your TV. Amen. You get mad when you can't try that. Is that right? Where's the remote? But you don't have to say, where's the Bible? It's over there collecting dust where you left it. All right? Now, I've had my fun. That was my fun for the day. Amen. We're going to let the choir come down. Give it a man. Learning the books of the Bible. Something we used to do. How many used to do that in BTU? Amen. BTU at Bible school, vacation Bible school. Amen. You learn the books of the Bible. And we've gotten so far away from God, we don't even know what you're talking about sometimes when you say books of the Bible. We're going to learn a little lesson today, the God's magnificent plan of salvation. Because the world is in trouble. The world is in trouble. The Pope said, ISIS has begun the World War III. And Time Magazine cover says World War ISIS. Do you know because of so much terroristic threat, threats, people are wondering if this is the end of the world? Do you know that most of our enemies can shut down our infrastructure on, our com on the computers of our water system, our electricity? China and Russia and probably North Korea have already hacked into things like the White House email. If they wanted to cripple us tomorrow, they could do it. Isn't that amazing? We changed everything to computers. I like it in the old days, you just had manual things. Amen. You go to the bank now, there used to be a long line at, uh, what's the bank, San Antonio Credit Union. When their computers were down, you had to stand in line and send out the Domino's Pizza. Because <laughs> they take so long. Because the, they say our computers broke down. What have we done to ourselves and what are we doing to ourselves? We're not studying the word of God. We're not we're just going on like tomorrow is promised to us. We want to look today the mystery of the kingdom of God. 
Jesus called it a mystery of the kingdom of God. And we're going to be in the fourth chapter of the book of Mark because it's a mystery. And he says, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to the uninitiated, for those who don't have faith, for those who will never know God, it's a parable. And so there are some things that pass over us uh, because there are people who are, do not believe and there are things that go right to our heart for those who believe and understand and know and can gather themselves and have enough faith in Jesus Christ. Is the end upon us and what should we do? And the next question is, are you rapture ready? Did you hear me? Are you rapture ready? He said, what does that have to anything to do with it? Because if you don't know the time zone in which we're living, if you don't know the dispensation under which we have right now, you will go on just like the, the people did in Noah's day. They were marrying and giving in marriage, eating and drinking, and knew not that it was the end of the world for them until it was too late. And what happened? The flood came upon them. And that will be the way the, the, the Son of Man will come back. They will be unaware because they haven't read the signs of the times. So in, in your study, I encourage you to go back and read the Olivet Discourse where Jesus says on the 24th chapter of Matthew that these are the signs of the times, earthquakes in diverse places. Is that right? Wars and rumors of wars and men, violence. The world is filled with violence. We need not go on that. 34 people are murdered every day in America by 12 noon, and it's almost that now. 17 people would have been killed. By the time you go to bed, 17 more would have been murdered. That's how, how vociferous, that's how large murder is in America. Not to mention what happened in Colorado. You see? So these are the signs, and if you are not astute, if you're not awake, if you're not listening, if you're not learning, if you've now turned it on remote control and said, this is the time I sleep, you're going to miss the lesson. And you're going to miss the blessing. Your job, should you accept it, like mission impossible. Your mission, should you decide to accept it. The reason why God has you here in this generation, 2015, is that you might speak a word of salvation into the hearing of somebody's life. You're here to witness. I'm here to preach. You're here to witness. You listen to me preach, and you don't witness. When was the last time you witnessed for Christ? When was the last time you led someone to Christ using the Romans road to salvation or even the Bible? Did you just tell them to come to church? Because coming to church is not witnessing per se. Coming to Christ is witnessing. Amen? Amen. So many today. So I want to indict you just a little and then encourage you a whole lot. And then equip you with the rest of the time we have. You need to be equipped. So you'll know what to say. Yeah. What time is it? Back in the 70s, I believe it was the music group named Chicago came out with a popular tune. Does anybody know what time it is? Does anybody care? And the song would come back with, I don't care. Yes, you do need to care. Because it's later than you think. Are you rapture ready? And if not, why not? What is, what is it going to take to get you ready? We're going to look at that right now as we begin our message in the book of Mark at chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, draw swords, as we used to say in sword drill. And then he says, I want to go to chapter 4. I want to go at verse 11 this time. I'm not going to go through the parable, per se, as I get to the understanding of the parable. Chapter 4, verse 11, these words are found. And he said unto them, unto you, talking to Christians, is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them who are unsaved, that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear, and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he says unto them, he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? 
And how then shall you know all parables? The sower sows the word. Father, we thank you now for the infallible, inherent, life-changing, and transforming word of God. Bless now these who have come. Bless now these who open their Bibles and open their hearts and minds, that they may, Lord, study anew and afresh the infallible word of God. May it change them forever. May we never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 May be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to understand, in this parable, Jesus says, Hearken and behold, that we're not a sower to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And then some fell on stony ground. And then some fell among the thorns and the thistles. And then some fell on good ground. Four categories of ground representing four categories of souls that hear the word. So the seed was the word of God. And the seed goes into the ground, the darkness, and then the moisture germinates the seed, and then it sprouts up and brings forth. And the Lord says there are some hearts that are just like the wayside. In other words, you hear the word, and then the bowels of the air, the birds, come and get the seed off the ground because there's no depth. How many of you have heard the word and gone on to do nothing about what you've heard? You were convinced at the time, yes, I need to hear that. Yes, I need to do that. But then something else takes your mind away. Those birds represent the devil, and the devil always gives you something else when he sees you getting close to the truth of God. When the devil sees you about to change your life, when the devil sees you about to make a significant change in your life, he distracts you. Peter was walking on the water but to go to Jesus, and the devil sent the wind and made the sea boisterous and tempestuous. Then Peter took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. And that's forever our perennial plight when we are trying to do what God said do. The devil is a distractor. The devil wants you to take a detour. The devil wants you to go down a dead end. The devil wants you to hit a barrier. God wants you today to learn the lesson and to learn it well. Because your job and your mission is to go out from here, make disciples in the name of Jesus. And you can start with those in your family if you need to, and then go to those next that you know that are under your influence, your friends that you come into contact with. God wants you to do something about the situation. Why? Because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God has love, and listen, he's not willing that any should perish. So he gives this parable of four types of soul. And the first three are no good because people hear and they let the devil distract. Then they grow among the hard ground and the stone. They spring up, but because they have no depth, they don't go down. And some of us have no depth. We can't hold our attention long. We got to go get something. It's coming up to New Year's Eve. Somebody be talking about, I'm planning New Year's Eve. And you're in church too. Amen. We have no depth. Whatever the season is, we get seasonal in our worship. I go to church for Easter and, and Christmas. But I don't go any other time unless there's a wedding up here. See how we restrict God. So the Lord says, I want you to learn something. I'm talking to Christians in this parable. And those who are never going to learn, I'm never going to let you see. Isn't that something? And that's what the Lord says. He says, unto you, Christians, you are given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto those who don't want to learn, they won't be able to see. They'll see it, but they won't perceive it. They'll hear it, but they won't understand it. And that they might, if they knew it and heard it and perceived it and understood it, they might be saved. Isn't that something the Lord would say? In other words, the Lord says, you're predestined to be saved or conformed to the image of Christ, or you're predestined to be cast into outer darkness. And he said, for those who never will learn, you know, you have some students who'll never, who never, seem like they never will learn. You ever run into them? Oh, yeah. Used to have a kid, in, in the old days, they wouldn't pass you on social promotion, right? And so they had some people in who made a career out of, out of high school. They've been there three years, three classes, they haven't graduated. Uh, three years behind their class. After that, they just give up. That was sad. But there's some people who never get it, who always seem to play when they should be studying. And they never take serious their life. So the Lord says, for them, 
never do what they want. I got those who saved who I won't save, and those who are saved, it's given to them to know the mystery. There's a mystery of the kingdom of God. You see, we are three part beings. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Now the mystery is that we see our bodies, we see each other, we recognize each other. We understand that uh, some people are friends, some people are strangers, but we uh, have world consciousness with our body. Then with our soul, we have self-consciousness, and then with our spirit, it's capable of God consciousness. The mystery is that God is gonna separate one third of you, when the body goes back into the ground, and this is a casket up here instead of the Lord's supper table, and the casket has your remains in it, that will go in the ground, but two thirds of you will go back to God, and you will see something you've never seen before. You will have consciousness in another world. It is something that people don't talk about, and they think if you talk about it too long, you must be crazy. But there is another land that is fairer than day. There is another place we go after we die, and a funeral may be had down here, but in glory, somebody's walking in with a new name, a new body, and a new nature. God says, I got something in store for you that's a mystery. And if I showed it to everybody, everybody would want it. And they would want it for the wrong reason. Remember the rich man who came to Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And what did the Lord tell him? Go sell your Mercedes. Uh, go sell the house in the Dominion. Go get rid of all the money in your bank account and come and follow me. And the Bible says that man went away sad because he had much and he didn't want to give away nothing. The Lord says how hard it will be for those who are rich to come into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get the glory. And when they said, I have a needle, they didn't mean a literal sewing needle. But it was the gate when they entered in. And for the camel to get down, to go through the gate, he had to get down on all knees. Then he had to rid himself of his burden. So his, his keeper would have to take the burdens off. So the camel could go through the eye of the needle, which is the gate. There's some things we need to get rid of. Some old habits, old head knots, old things we used to do. Because the mystery of the kingdom of God is greater than the burdens you bear. God has something in store for you that will make your time on earth look like a picnic. When you see what good things God has in store for those who know, I have not seen nor ear heard what God has for you. God knows you. God made you. God knows all about you. God knows you better than you know yourself. In fact, God knows what you're going to think next, and you haven't even thought of it next. He says, I see your thoughts from afar, and I will not withhold any good thing from those who love me. And those who love me obey my Amen. Amen. Now, what was the mystery that they asked about? Lord, what is the mystery? He says, no, you know, you're not the source, so the word, and the word that falls on this ground will not bring forth and went through the, the stony ground, he went through the thorns and the thistles, but then that, so that seed fell on the fourth ground, good ground. Right. And the Bible says it brought forth, look how God wants you to multiply, 30-fold, 60-fold, <coughs> and 100-fold. On the investment of your faith, God will, the minimum investment he gives is 30%. Nobody in town is paying that. Nobody around the globe is paying that. But when you invest in the Lord, he says, I will let my seed, if you believe, if your soul and your heart is good enough, you can believe that seed will germinate and bring forth fruit in your life. God wants to do that for you. How you, be, how you submit yourself to God is going to be a testament of how well God uses you. Some of us don't want to submit self on Sunday. Huh? You got a Sunday kind of love. Huh? And then God, some of us just want to submit on Sunday and Wednesday. And we got a two-day love, huh? And the rest of the week, get out of my way because you don't know where I'm from. Is that us? Get on the freeway, they better make room for me because here I come. We got an aggressive nature. And aggressive nature is what keeps us from out of fellowship with God. Let me show you the mystery. All right? 
We're going to move this sacrament table all the way over to the wall. This is a day when you more have to go to sleep than you ought to pay attention, so we're going to have visual aids. Say amen. 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 So I'm going to walk the aisle, so if I catch you sleeping, I'm going to get right next to you, and we're going to listen to you snore into the mic. All right. Now, that's an that's a idle threat, but I want to keep you awake today. All right. Now, here's the mystery. The mystery is in the Word, and the Word is in God. In the beginning, God created the world, and he made the heavens and the earth by his one word. Is that right? By his word was in it. It was not anything made that was made. But in the beginning was the word. And the word is capitalized, which meant it's deity. And if it's deity, that means it's Jesus Christ. So in the beginning was the word. Now this marvelous plan of salvation comes forth. Give me a couple of cheers. Amen. Give me a couple of cheers, because I want to raise this so that the uh, TV audience can see it. Amen. And then I want you to see what we go through. Just sit it right there. Amen? Somebody wonders what the gift is for. Wait your turn. All right. Turn the chairs to face one another. To face each other. Right? Now tilt this right on the pulpit. Amen? What is the mystery of the kingdom of God? That God has, everybody say this, a marvelous plan of salvation, of salvation for your life. And the real thing to, is to know where we are today. Hold my Bible. Where we are today on the line, timeline that God has. As there were seven days of the week. Is that right? Monday all the way through Sunday. Is that right? How many days did it take the Lord to make the earth? And on the seventh day, he did what? He rested. So in six days, he made the world. He made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Is that right? Yeah. And so the total time, it took him for six days, but on the seventh, he rested. He rested. Why did he rest? Because he was tired? No. He rested to show us there is a rest that we begin with in God. Before you can, Adam's first day on the planet was day six. Is that right? So his day where he was made was day six. But the first day he had a full day on the planet was the seventh day. What does that mean? Adam entered into the rest of God before he could do anything for God or anything as God has ordered him. Before you can begin your day, before you can begin your life in Christ, you've got to learn to rest in the Lord and in the finished work of God. We try too many times to try to work our way and try to do our way. And we work too long, and we work too hard, and we get mad, and we don't take vacations, and we don't do anything. But God says, enter into the joy of my rest. Amen, amen. All come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. rest. So as there were seven days, and the seventh day was rest, so there are seven dispensations. Say dispensations. Can you say that? Dispensation is a time period in which God will try man with certain specific rules. And the, dis the rules are cumulative, they don't end, the dispensation doesn't end, it's a cumulative thing. So that when we have dispensations, we have seven up here. We have one is innocence, two is conscience, three is government, four is promise, five is law, six is grace, and the last dispensation will be kingdom. That will be the 1,000 millennial reign of Christ. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, thy kingdom, do what? Come. Come. And this is the kingdom age to which he speaks. So here is a mystery we're going to talk about this morning. But I don't want to belabor you with all of the things. I just want to focus when we get to grace. When we get to the dispensation of grace, that's the number six. Remember, man was made on the what? Sixth day. And so we come to the dispensation of grace. And we're going to talk about how easy it is to come to Christ. This is where you were born. Say amen. amen. Had you been born under law? Huh? You would have anything you broke. If you broke one iota of the law, you were guilty of all of it. Is that right? Amen. Remember the woman taken in adultery? They wanted to do what with her? Stone her, because that was what the law says. If they would have stoned her, she would have died. But here is the time you were born. You were born after the cross that Jesus died on, and you were born into grace. Let me run through these so you can have an appreciation. This is God's plan of salvation. On this side of the timeline, all this blank space is called eternity. And then time comes in 
because time is made by man, by God, for man. So this is like a parenthetical. This is a timeline that God has for man to come to Christ. This is the timeline that you have when God says time will wrap up and be no more. This is the timeline when the angel will stand one foot on dry ground and the other one on land and say, and on sea, and say there is no more time. And when that day comes, God's wrath will be unleashed on the earth. You need to know that. We're worried about is ISIS going to take over? What's going to happen? If we get into World War III, will that be the end of the world? You need to know the next major event that will happen from heaven will not be a war, but will be the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. Someone stand and read 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, and 18. Someone stand and read that. You need to know Thessalonians talks about the rapture. Someone else get 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, 53. I got two scriptures working right now, and you're in a participating venture to know your Bible and to get there. Amen? Amen. Thessalonians 4, 4, yes. Okay. You get to go to 11, 12. First Thessalonians 4, 11, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, mm -hmm. concerning them which are asleep. Here we go. That ye are sorrow not, even as others which has no hope. For if, he, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we're talking about a rapture now. We're talking about those who die, that's asleep. They will rise again. There is no basis for believing that except you believe the word of God. Something dead ought to be buried. But what God says is, I'm more than death itself. I am life, and I am life eternal, so that if you die, I can bring you back again. It's not what Abraham took Isaac up on the mountain, and he left the two servants with the mules, and said, we're going up to the mountain. And he was to sacrifice his only son. But he counted God, if I take his life, God will raise him again. In other words, he believed in the resurrection before he had any knowledge of the resurrection. He just knew, if God take him, God will bring him back. That is what is going on here. That God has authority, everybody say authority, authority. over death. Oh, yeah. And even though you die, can that which is dead live again? Yes, yes. We have our doubts. Can, is that which is dead, can God bring life into an empty, dead carcass? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Ask Lazarus, the son of Mary, the brother of Mary and Martha. When he go to that tomb, he said, Lazarus, come forward. And who got up? If he had not said Lazarus, the theologian said everybody would have gotten up. Because he had authority yeah. in his word. Yeah. So here we talk about the rapture, and it's not called rapture, but it is the rapture nevertheless. In other words, you won't see the word rapture, but you see the principle of dying and living again. Amen. Amen. Don't you want to live again after you die? Yeah. First of all, you don't want to die, is that right? Yeah. If you got any sense, you don't want to die. But even if you die, you die in Christ, you'll live again. Is that right? Yeah. All right, let, let me go further. Go further with the commission. All right, same first Yeah, mm -hmm. same passage. Okay, we are in 15. 15. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Last verse, 17. Then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Circle that verse. That is the rapture, per se, 17. We shall be caught up to meet him. Well, yeah. Which means he's not coming to touch down on Mount uh, uh, the olive, at, uh, olive yet. He's coming in the air, and those who are caught up in the rapture will be caught up in the air. 
Amazing. But how did we get to this point? Thank you, Deacon Ray. All right, now who has 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52? Who has that? Nobody got that? You got it. Go ahead, Ray. 
If you know the difference, then do all the good. Is that right? That's what God said. And under conscience, who killed who? Cain. The first murder in history came under conscience. Why? Because Cain was jealous of his younger brother. Being jealous of the offering that the Cain that Abel offered, God accepted Abel's offering, but Cain's offering was rejected because it was from the cursed ground. And so Cain decided, I'm gonna kill him. And he killed him. Then we get up to the point of Noah's time when all the world was filled with violence, like it is now. And the Lord says, as the days of Noah were, so shall my coming be. The earth was filled with violence. And they were marrying and giving in marriage. And that old Noah is following God's command, taking almost 120 years or so to build the ark, and everybody laughed at it because the fool was building it on dry ground. Is that right? And the Lord came down to look at man and says, my spirit will not always dwell with men, seeing that he's evil, and he's murdering everybody, violence. And he says, I will come, I will destroy man. I'll destroy the earth. It's my creation. I can ball it up and throw it away if I want. I'm God. And so he was telling Noah, build an ark. And all who are going into that ark will be saved. And all who are outside of the ark will die. Do you remember that? And that ark represents the symbolism of Christ. All who are in Christ will be saved. All who are under the blood will be saved. All who do not know Christ, all who have not known the mysteries of God, they will be destroyed. So the ark was for going into, and the first time come is mentioned in the Bible, is mentioned in the book where Noah and his family are invited to come into the ark, where God is. And he says, come in, and God closed the door, and that generation, that generation perished in the flood. Multiple tsunamis rains that came up and the mountains the water came up to the tip of the mountains and destroyed the earth is that right Amen. and we come under government and under government after if you will Noah's sons began to repopulate the earth he said be fruitful and replenish is that what he said the earth so Noah and his son <coughs> then we got this man named Nimrod Nimrod is a preview of the Antichrist Nimrod is a preview of that who, that Antichrist who will rise up in our lifetime and decide a one world system is best. He will be the one who inaugurates the mark of the beast. And if you do not have the mark of the beast in your forearm or your forehead, you will not be able to buy or sell. And that day and the technology is already in place. All we need is the strength of character to be able to put those marks in people and then be able to run the country and run the world. Nimrod had a one world system. He said, I will build my tower up to the throne of God and I will take over heaven. And the Lord had told them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, but they came under one government. And one government was a failure. When the Antichrist comes during the tribulation period right here, before the kingdom age, right after the rapture, the Antichrist will set up a one world government. And just like Nimrod, he will rule with a hand of iron. Just like Nimrod, he will have people beheaded. You don't want to be here when tribulation breaks out because it was bad enough under the time of Noah. It will be bad enough under the time of the government when Nimrod steps in and the Lord came down and saw that man was trying to build this tower thinking he could go physically into heaven thinking he could take over heaven. Isn't that something the devil had him so messed up? He thought he could build a tower high enough to reach, and they built a skyscraper. And the Lord says, hmm, man is of one tongue. Let us confound the tongues, and they won't be able to speak. And that's why languages broke out at the Tower of Babel. Somebody was speaking Swahili, somebody was speaking Portuguese, and somebody was speaking French, and they couldn't handle grip to each other because they didn't understand each other. And therefore they scattered. Is that right? And so they scattered over the world. Then the Lord called. So that was a failure. If you're looking for government to be your answer, all you got to do is look at the devil and Donald Trump. That's what I decided. That was the devil and Daniel Webster. That's the devil and Donald Trump. If Donald Trump is elected, look out. We're going to have a one world system sooner than we thought. Go skip a few steps and get there quicker. Amen? Man who lies. Man who doesn't want Hispanics to come into the America. 
man who says, I'm against immigrants, put them all out, put 11 million people out. That's like an antichrist. A man who says, I, I don't want uh, refugees from Syria. Right? Those people have en endured much hardship. And then what, the other man who was uh, put out of his uh, meeting when it was, uh, was a black man protesting. I don't mind if he got roughed up a bit. That means rough up the black folk. That's what it means. You better get that. Then we get to the next point when he mimics a handicapped person. I just thought I'd say that because you, you ought to look at the news and take it for what it's worth. Here's a man who is so filled with hatred, he's just like the Nimrod of old. He's so filled with himself that if he's elected, I don't know what we can expect. Expect the unexpected. I just thought I'd say that. Hillary is not much better, but she believes in God. She allegedly believes in God. Amen? And Donald Trump said, I go to church and his pastor said, no, you don't. <laughs> You've been here a hundred Sundays. Don't lie to those public. And, and he sent a tweet to the news. I said, this man doesn't go to church. His brother and mother and father went to church here, but I ain't seen him in a hundred years. Bless that pastor. Y'all didn't know that? You better read for yourself. Now let me move on with my story for a while. Let's I'll hold you too long. Here comes Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans. Ur of the Chaldeans was a wicked nation. Ur of the Chaldeans, they served idol gods. Ur of the Chaldeans was a hard place to go up in because they believe in all kind of paganistic gods. But God called Abram from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to a place I'll show you. And God gave him a promise. I will make of thee a great nation. I'm going to take you, forget your daddy, forget your brothers. I'm going to make you a great nation. And God gave him a promise. And what did Abraham do? He got up and went 600 miles into a land he didn't have a destination for. And he saw a mountain, and God says, on that mountain, I want you to sacrifice your son. But he showed him into Palestine, and he walked up and down the length of Palestine. He says, I'm going to give you this land to you and all your heritage. And your heritage who comes from your loins will be a blessing to every generation and all the families of the earth. And in Abraham's time, Abram had to undo and had to endure a famine. He came 500 miles to Palestine, and then a famine arose. What did he do? He left the place of blessing, which was between a mountain called Aon and Shechem. He left that place and went into Egypt. The Bible says he went down. We know our problem is when we don't get blessed. God prepositions us. I said this a hundred times. He prepositioned us for a blessing. And we get headstrong, headlong, and we decide, I ain't standing, and we move. And when God comes back to bless us, we're not there. Abraham moved and went down into Egypt and told Sarah, Sarah, tell Pharaoh you're my sister. So it'll go well for me. And what did Pharaoh do? Took, Abraham, took Sarah into his harem. And is that right? Would have made her his wife until the Lord troubled him. Huh? He lied. His, the, the king had to call the Christian. He called the preacher and said, why are you laughing? He's always scared. He said, get out of here. And then Abraham went back to the place where he was between Aha and Shechem. And that was a place of blessing. But he went back a rich man. The first time riches are mentioned in the Bible, ill-gotten through going to Egypt. And then that was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham and the herdsmen of his nephew Lot. Is that right? And then her, Abraham to come with a magnanimous offer. Lot, let that be no fighting among us and our herdsmen. You take the land in the high ground, or you take the land in the low ground. Whichever you want to take. And Abraham and Lot looked on the plains of Egypt and saw they were well watered. He saw a gated community in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he inched his way. How you do it when you want to do evil? You inch your way. You persuade yourself. You lie to yourself. And hey, I'll just be there, little Bob. And he went down into Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says he sat at the gate. Is that right? Angels came to get him and he brought the angels to his house. And then the next thing you know, the men of the city wanted to know the angels. All right, let me move on. So without the promise, it fell. We fell. We find Abraham lying about his wife. We find the fact that even though we want to do good, evil is still with us. And so now we come to the point where Joseph goes down into Egypt becomes prime minister of Egypt, and Egypt, if you will, puts them under bondage, and they grow to more than four million people or so. And that's when the law became the Mosaic. God gets Moses, 
brings him out uh, into the backside of the desert, sends him back into Egypt, and then he comes to Mount Hebron, Hebron, and the Lord gives him the law, and the law was written for the nation of Israel. All right? Now here's the law. The law is you gotta obey the law, because if you don't obey the law, you're guilty of the infraction. What happened under the law? We couldn't make it. And if we tried today, we couldn't make it. How many have sinned? You in church, don't lie. Hold up both hands. Amen, now that's better, amen? Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come what? Short, the glory of God. So there is sin in all of us, and the only reason that we can be saved is because Jesus came during the law, fulfilled the law, lived everything perfectly, lived right before God, and then was made a sacrifice for us. Just like there were coverings for Adam and Eve when they sinned and found out they were naked, and God slayed an animal and put coverings on them. Jesus would come, fulfill the law, and we are covered by his righteousness, covered by his blood, covered by his goodness, because what Jesus did is imputed to us when we pass under the blood and believe in Jesus Christ. And so we get the dispensation of grace. Jesus was crucified. And then on the third day, what happened? He was rose. He raised from the dead and was resurrected. And then when he went to glory, he sent down the Holy Spirit. Do you follow me? He sent down the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now has come into the world on the day of Pentecost. For when the day of Pentecost was fully come, then the Holy Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind. Door was closed, Holy Spirit came in. You heard him first, and then you saw him as cloven tongues of fire dancing on the heads, meaning split tongues. And then everybody could speak, if you will, the 12, in the 12 languages of the people there. They went out into the street, and they said, these are drunk men. They said, we are not drunk, seeing it but the third hour. Notice that, they didn't get drunk at night. Huh? We got some folk who wake up drunk and get drunk. At nine, they said, we respected the time, it ain't time to get drunk, huh? Yeah. And they said, but this is that which was spoken of by Joel, the prophet, and this is the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit, this is the easiest time to come to Christ. Under the law, if you sin, you have to give a sacrifice, a blood, a, a herd, a bull, a goat, a lamb, a ram, a pigeon, a turtle dove. Five types of offerings you had to give if you sin. So that meant if you were a big sin, you had to have a big flock. Is that right? How many sins are you going to do? You better increase that flock, baby. And so Jesus came and he was the one and only sacrifice. This is called the church age. Now I want you to know this is where you are. And the next thing that will happen at the end of this church age will be the rapture. Unexplained, un, 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 if you will, unexpected. But it will happen. So the world is getting closer to violence as it did in Noah's day. They were marrying and giving in marriage, and in this generation, we have same-sex marriage. Notice how intensely violent the world has become since the Supreme Court improved same-sex marriage. Have you noticed that? A judgment is coming. Now, I'm not just going to hit on the homosexuals. I'm going to hit on the adulterers, too. Amen. Every sin is sin. No sense of beating up the homosexual. They say, y'all sin too? And he said, yeah, you're right. But Jesus came and paid it all. This is, this dispensation of grace is the easiest time to come to Christ. Why? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. What do you do with a gift? You either receive it or you reject it. And the gift you get, you open so that you can know that God has given you something. Now, if you don't understand where you are right now, I doubt whether you'll know when the tribulation hits. In other words, God, Jesus came, sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is now gathering the church. Do you know what church means? It means called out ones. So the Holy Spirit is gathering called out ones. And he comes into us. He comes into a trusting heart and makes a trusting heart his home. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, your body is transformed. Therefore, when you die, your spirit goes up and it goes up to God. If you don't have Jesus, it goes down and goes into a place called hell, Gehenna, to Tyru, the place of the living dead. Now, there's a distinction. You can go to heaven up or you can go to hell down. 
You remember those old elevators used to have? Somebody remember elevator operators when they weren't automatic elevators? You go to, they go to the uh, medical arts building, which is the Emily Morgan there. Go down and they say, go up! Is that what they say? And they hit that little thing, that baby go up, climb up like a, like some kind of uh, ride at a, a car. Leave your stomach, huh? And say, going up, and then when you get ready to leave, you say, going down. Now, how would you like when you die? It's the angels is up there. Going down! He said, Jesus, I don't want to get on that little bit. Too late! Because during your lifetime, you had the opportunity to receive the gift of God, which is eternal life. You chose to ignore, forget, put him on hold, and put him on the delete button, and nobody cared about Jesus. So what will happen at the end of this age? Children, what do you expect? I don't know. I didn't expect the world to go this far during my lifetime. First of all, he said knowledge, he told Daniel in the 12th chapter of Daniel, knowledge will increase in the last day. Do you know in 24 or 48 hours on the internet, they will put enough information on YouTube, the social media, and upload enough information that will exceed from the beginning of the dawn of mankind up to now. What do you think? In two days, we can cover all those millions of years Man was on the planet, and we can, if you will, replicate, if not uh, outdistance, all the written material in two days since the beginning of man to the present time. Information has increased, but wisdom hadn't. Knowledge has increased, but it had, uh, wisdom hadn't. So if you're saying, this is the time, yes it is. Violence, we got the police killing the little man, the little boy, emptying a gun, 16 times on a boy who was walking away with a knife. By the, the, the history of uh, the facts that he was walking against them. In other words, he was walking away from them. And they said in a radius of 21 feet, there's no threat anyway. That's what the military men said. And then he got 21 feet, he ain't gonna get you with a knife. Not but if you have a gun. So the crazed policeman, am I telling the truth? He looked as bad as that killer, and, and, and uh, you put those pictures side by side, he looked as crazy as the one in Colorado. He emptied his gun. That was enough if you were frightened to one shot would have disabled him. Yeah. Yeah. Two was going overboard. Yeah. But he was shooting so much, Ray, his partner said, stop shooting so I can go and check and see if he's dead. Sixteen times. A, a little 17-year-old with nothing but a knife, but probably couldn't have hurt that cop that much anyway. Jeez. If it could have hurt him, cop was just about shooting, uh, give the cop that. He needed to be protecting himself. But 16 bullets. Now let me flip that burger over and say that was a crazy man in, in Colorado who shot about nine people and five of them were officers, killed one officer who was a co-pastor, and killed two other people. How did they let him walk out of there and didn't empty the gun on him? Yeah. I just want to ask that question. Yeah. See, why didn't they empty the gun on him? We, we got to understand him. We got to figure out what's wrong with him. He took a deer rifle and shot as many people as he could. Why didn't they empty the gun, Ray, on him like they did the 16 year old? You see what's wrong with our world? I'm just, just pointing some things out. And, they, and then why did they hold Ron Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, hold the report 400 days before they released it? Only because Ron Emanuel was running for re-election and he knew that kind of thing would hurt his chances. 400 days when the, the film was conclusive evidence that a murder had taken place and the police is charged with the murder, as he should be. Whether he'd get convicted, another's too. Another tune for another day. The same prosecutor who will prosecute him is the same prosecutor early who filed false charges against a policeman and said, oops, and they let the policeman off because she filed the wrong charges deliberately. This is the same one. Y'all gotta track this stuff. Y'all gotta read more. You hear it, but you're not perceiving. So what does God say about it? The whole thing is our system is corrupt. Violence is everywhere. And I don't know if having a gun is the answer. Having a gun, can you stop someone? You gotta pull the gun out, you gotta know who to shoot, and you gotta be right. 
Texas says you can carry a gun anytime you want. Is that right? Open carry. Right. Isn't that something? So that means anybody who you rough up in the parking lot and you get you beat to a parking space, they might be having a bad half day. They're gonna pull out their grill out a pistol and say, get out of my spot. What are you gonna do? Back out? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do better? She ain't going nowhere. Ray, you better be over there for me. <laughs> These here are dangerous times. You don't know who's packing and who's not. Is that right? And, and it's 12 now, and, and it's 12, 20 now, that means 17 people have already been murdered somewhere in America. 17 more coming. We are the most violent nation. We have the most population in prisons than, than most third world countries. You can add some countries up and you still wouldn't get the number we have. Yeah. We have a sick society. What is the reason we're sick? We've gone away from Jesus. What is the reason we're sick? Because in our inter entertainment, we love to look at murder she wrote. Yeah. Huh? Nothing on but CSI here, CSI Miami, CSI New Orleans, CSI. Everybody's killing somebody. Do you know the number of violent things reflect the, the kind of culture we live in? And the more murder, and then you go get, um, what's the new thing? It's not uh, with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, with the silver, huh? The little, um, what is it called? Book, station, what is it called? PlayStation? PlayStation got Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that uh, uniform. Somebody knows this, the kids keep up with that. If you watch the football game, they had it on that for 12 different times. And they murdered people for sport. Now, how is that teaching anything but murder to our children? So when they grow up, what's the game you're going to play? Murder! Let's go get some of their guns and get their deal rifle out and let's see how many people we can kill for whom. That's what's wrong with America. President Obama buying up all the ammunition, trying to hold back the ammunition so they won't shoot. And then I was informed that when the ammunition goes on sale, they buy it in bulk and resell it at a high price. There's just no way of stopping violence in our nation. They step God is going to have to step in. Don't put yourself in a simple mindset that we can shoot back. They got more guns, more ammunition. I passed by Nordis Gun Club. I got more folk over there than I had at church on Sunday. Nordis is the gun club right down here on 90. Where they, they woke up and got up. They woke up this morning with their mind stayed on their 45. And I was going to stay on Jesus. Huh? And they got down there and shot until their clothes were full of uh, uh, gunshot. Huh? All that powder getting all their clothes. And they're going to watch them and come back again. They believe in Sunday morning shooting. So we do. What's going to happen? One day, some glad morning, when this life is over. We go fly. The song says fly. Now how's that going to happen? You are going to be standing in one spot. And the Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the atom, the bat of your eye, like, whoo, you'll be changed. Whoo, you'll be changed. You'll be getting ready to take another step, and you'll be changed. If you are saved, sanctified, born of the Lord Jesus, have the Holy Ghost in you, sealed with him until the day of redemption, you will be caught up. What will that be like, Ray? I don't know what it'd be like. In a moment, I'll go from terrestrial, earthly, to celestial, glorified. In a moment, I'll be looking at dirty hands, and the next, I'll be looking at new hands, looking at new feet. And then I'll be caught up. I'll be caught up in the air. You mean I look around, and I won't be dropping? And that's something, I had so many dreams flying, I'll be glad to fly up there. I said, oh, this is a good ride. God will call, say, he will, you will be caught up to meet him in the air. Then we will go to a place called glory. And the Bible says, so shall we be with him forevermore. What else is going to happen? I'm through after this. We get raptured, and we go home to live with Christ. The dead in Christ, your mama, and all those who died before you, will be caught up and raised first. So when you get up to glory, when you get up into the air, you're going to see mama. He said, Mom, what you doing here? See, I've been here, baby. I've been waiting on you. When you get to glory, you're going to see all these people that you, you thought were dead, and you just say, I thought, and you say, you don't even go there. 
God has done a miracle in our life. And we have been transformed. We have this, this glorified body now that's glistening like the sun. We have a, a radiance that is of the glory of God. And we shall never die again. And God shall wipe away all tears. And he'll put a new walk in us and a new talk in us. And we'll forever be changed, glorified, to praise him forever and ever and ever. While on earth, tribulation will come. The great tribulation, a seven-year unprecedented, unparalleled time. But the devil will become more intense and evil. And those who do not receive the mark of the beast will be beheaded. And the devil will take over. The satanic trinity. Did you know that satanic trinity? Well, the holy trinity. My father's not holy trinity. Satanic trinity. Devil. Beast. Antichrist. And the beast, how the Antichrist will be able to get a mortal wound to the head. And they say he's dead. And he'll get up again. The devil said, I, I can do the same trick Jesus did. I'm going to get him up again. And the entire Antichrist will go into the place of the holies of holies and commit abomination of the desolation. And that's when the Lord comes back to set up his millennial. Everybody say millennium. Amen. One thousand, one thousand year reign. This is why we say, give us this day. I'll be written in thy kingdom come. Because the kingdom will come. And this is what they saw in Jesus' time. They thought the kingdom would be set up over here. But the kingdom comes after the tribulation. When the Lord comes with a rule of iron. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. And every nation. Listen, we won't be able to stop ISIS. But Jesus will. We can't find ISIS. In fact, the FBI is so sorry. I'm going to talk about it. They knew that there were going to be attacks on Planned Parenthood a month ago. But they didn't get out there to Planned Parenthood and protect those people. I'm fearful of Barack Obama. Somebody hopped the White House fence again after they put little types of uh, those, uh, whatever force or some kind of hindrances on the fence. Now, if you put Henry's on the fence, what that man do to hop in that fence? Can't they get some old bulldog somewhere? Huh? Can't they get some Doberman somewhere? What's the matter with these people? And the last man got into the White House and went on in there. They're not taking care of our president. Well, when he went to South America, they were having a wheels up party, going around all the prostitutes. Am I telling the truth or did you read the news? Huh? And one didn't want to pay one, cheap thing. Huh? And she told the police, and that's how the whole thing got out. I mean, I'm reading the paper, y'all. The news is in prophecy in the news. What are you saying, Reverend Benson? The tribulation will be unparalleled. A third of the vegetation, you think it's bad now with global warming? You think it's bad now with the polar caps melting and the sea level rising? You think it's bad now when tectonic plates are moving and rubbing against each other, creating the San Adrian Fault, and when that vault breaks, it's going to be the biggest earthquake you've ever seen. If you think it's bad now, wait till the earthquakes come and that subterranean fire from the mantle of the earth, 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit, comes bubbling over. Mount Kilauea has already erupted again, and the lava's running down. What happens when the earth spews out? Huh? Subterranean fires go out all over the earth. He said, he said, I wouldn't destroy it with water, but fire next time. Amen. Y'all better get busy and be about your father's business. Stop playing. Stop being lazy. How many have been lazy? Raise your hand. Be honest. And you've been lazy this, this Thanksgiving. Raise both hands. All right. Now, now we're going to get somewhere because we got to the truth first. You've got to know the word of God and start witnessing more. What's said about the cowboys? Talk about Jesus. Amen. Cowboys ain't going nowhere. Bless their heart. I like them. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. Huh? Tony Roman? He's out for the rest of the season? How long? How many games he play? One and a half? You going to wait next year to another one and a half game? Or you going to get a new quarterback? Come on, get a new one. Get a brother who can run into it. But that's my, that's all another day. Talk about Jesus. 
I know my Redeemer living. Yeah. Huh? I know who made heaven and earth. And I know who holds my hand. Because I know he holds tomorrow too. Amen. You've got to come up with a powerful witness. You're not getting, you're not getting excited enough. You let the world start, huh? you let those ISIS people start getting a bomb from somewhere they can borrow. And they can get it. They won't get nuclear uh, uh, warhead, and next thing you know, listen, I went back and looked at the movie where it says Olympus has fallen. Did y'all see that movie? That's when, they, when the Koreans came over and bombed the White House. They said, it takes the army from, uh, from uh, Virginia 30 minutes to get to the White House to protect it. So they had a small little invading raiders who came in, took out the White House, right, and put the president in the safe room and then they broke into the safe room and got him and held him hostage and wanted to launch codes on all of them. Listen, that was fiction. But do you know they don't protect Barack Obama? No. And if it hadn't been for God himself, Michelle and those kids would have probably been killed. Yes, they would have, because somebody is crazy enough to do it. And listen, what you worry about is the, all the rhetoric, angry rhetoric, that got the Planned Parenthood place shot up. Angry rhetoric that's mad at the Hispanics for coming over here. Huh? Angry rhetoric. I'm just, I just hate Barack Obama so much. I'll elect the devil if he'll get it now. You're going to get the devil. Say Be careful of what you wish for. Now, he, he might have been that great of a president, but he's our president. I respect him. I like I respect the dumb George Bush. <laughs> huh? I'm through now. I don't got, I don't got editorial. Excuse me. I got an editorial. That wasn't in my notes. Where is my notes? Get your Bible ready. How many know the Romans road to salvation? How many memorize the Romans road to salvation? If somebody were dying right now and said, I don't know Jesus. I'm afraid to go through the tribulation. I don't want to go down. Save me. What do you even say to him? Well, come to church Sunday. It's Wednesday. I ain't going to make it. What are you going to do? How are you put here on the planet with a mouth and legs and arms? What are you going to say to him? You better know what to witness to. The soul you say, huh? Might be your own. Might be your loved one. You better learn the word of God. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Hold up that gift one more time. This is the easiest time. It's the gift of God. Jesus said, I know you're not going to live right. I know you're going to do wrong. Luther Ingram was under here under, huh? under conscience. Uh, Luther Ingram wrote his song in the conscience. He knew right from wrong. What did he say? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Being right means being without you. I'd rather be wrong than right. Huh? Is that what he said? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Huh? So don't tell me you're going to do right because you know better. Knowing better ain't going to make you do better. Knowing the word of God is going to filter you and filter some of that foolishness out of you. And you don't want to put the word of God in. Why? Because I don't like it. No pictures in it. How ignorant can you be? I'm through that. How ignorant do you want to remain? Listen, I want to get on board when the rapture comes. I don't want to be left here to go through tribulation and watch the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast, and the devil take over the world. I don't want to be here. I don't want to get a mark in my hand. If you get a mark in your hand and you're none of God's, that means you'll have to go through the guillotine and be beheaded. I don't want to be beheaded. Huh? Got a little more breath in you. By the time they chop your head off, you're looking at your body, and then you die. I don't want to be beheaded. I want to be caught up to meet him in the air. This is the plan of God. And this is where we are on the timeline of God. You could wake up any morning and find that the Christians are gone. And if they're gone, uh-oh. If they're gone, you have all the land you have. You say, I'm going to drive Mama's car now. And you get in Mama's car. Watch that, baby. But it won't be anybody to show out in front of but the thugs and the people who don't know Christ. And they might hit you over the head. I got mama's car, I got a bank account, ooh, I'm rich. Got that for a little while. 
and then the Satan will take over, confiscate all bank accounts, and make you pay double for a little balance. Huh? Listen. Learn what the dispensations are. Learn that we are in the greatest time to come to Christ. If you don't move in this time, it'll be too late. James Cleveland wrote a song years ago. He said, it will be sad, so sad, when my Jesus comes and you won't be ready. Sad, so sad. Then he had to refrain. It's gonna be too late. Don't wait till it's too late. We have a habit of putting it off to the last minute or the last second. Y'all do that? But I go in a minute. Hey, hurry up, it's done! I'm coming, huh? Oh, lazy thing. You better get your house in order. Write your will. Write your will. Because they're gonna fight over your stuff. He said, I ain't got nothing to fight. They're going to fight anyway. It's like a good fight. Huh? And then get ready to leave. And when the Lord call you home, you're going to be caught up in the air. No wings. Whatever we're going to get there. Transports, teleports. And we're going to see all these people, and the Lord's going to be there. He said, let's go home. Wherever home is, we're going. And we're never coming back. You can cry all you want. Mom, come back. <laughs> Mama said, listen, you had your chance. I tried to tell you all this. So they get right and you didn't listen. I'm gone. When Samuel, I'm through with this. When Samuel the prophet was called up, when Saul went to the witch of Injiga over the book of Samuel, this is where Sam Samuel was in heaven. And the witch of Injiga had a familiar spirit that mimicked everybody. Just like that scene in Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost. The, 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 the familiar spirit could mimic everybody who going to hell. And so Saul went to the witch and said, conjure me up, Sam. And so the witch said, nah, nah, I can't do that, I'm a bitch. You know, that Saul, that means I'll, I'll see that nothing happened. So she conjured up what she thought was a familiar spirit, and here come bald head Sam. A real person, a real soul coming from heaven. Why have you disturbed my rest? First thing out of his mouth. She said, ah! And the witch got, her, got the daylight scared out of her because she saw a real spirit instead of a familiar spirit. And the real spirit was Samuel. And he was mad with Saul for waking and getting him out of his rest. Why have you disturbed my rest when I was with God? He said, I'm afraid the Philistines were upon us. And I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow. He said, listen, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be dead with me. I tried to tell your ignorant self to get right. And since you didn't, by tomorrow this time, you'll be with me. Goodbye. And he went on back to heaven and his rest. What will it be like, Sister Coleman, when we see Mama again? What will it be like when we see flowers of glory instead of flowers on the, on the planet? What will it be like when we hear the music of heaven and the holy angels singing? What will it captivate us with and what will we turn to see? And what will we feel like with a new body that has no aches, no pains, no chronic ailments? You can move from one side of the universe to the next and not be out of breath. You can dance all day and they won't give you oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> what will it be like? Thanks. I've got a new home over in glory and it's mine, mine, all mine. I've got a new home over in glory, and it's mine, mine, all mine. I got a new walk. I've got a new walk. I won't be left, huh? Over in glory, and it's mine, mine, all mine. I've got a new walk. Over in glory, when you get paid, you got to do more. And it's mine, mine, all mine. God wants to give you something great. And it's all based on love. He knows you're going to make an error. He knows you're messed up. But he wants to give you the greatest gift he can ever give you, the nature of his own son. And that will be enough, Crystal, when you present Christ. He said, come on in the glory. If you don't have Christ, you're not his. This is the easiest time.
to come to Christ. Don't blow it and don't wait too late. God bless you. Somebody may want to come, and if you do, we want to open the doors of the church. If you need to know Christ in a more excellent way, just take it down and leave the chairs there. Amen. We want you to come right now. Amen. That's right. Just as you are, without one plea, but that his blood, put that gift right on one of these chairs, and the person who wants to come up, come and get this gift. It's called eternal life. Just as I am without one thing, but that my blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to